Tonight on Sports Saturday, it's all chandeliers and bow ties in the Grove. Could Alabama take the hottie out of old Mrs. Toddy in Oxford? Or would it be Magnolia Magic for Dr. Bo? That's part of the problem. We have the full recap. Plus, a wild Saturday in the wild SEC West. Who has enough ammo to survive in two monster showdowns and make a statement? A Mississippi State meant. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Dak. So turn around. Get giddy. We're not playing checkers or trying out for the Olympics. Whoa. We're blasting off right now. City of Alabama live sports from Alabama's sports team this is WVUA sports well it was a huge play in the first half Cyrus Jones pokes the ball loose from Itavius Mathers and takes it to the house that gave Bama a 14 to 3 lead and all the momentum heading to the half but it was a fumble of Bama's own that may have been its undoing tonight. Welcome in everyone to Sports Saturday. Most of us already know the outcome of the Tides game against Ole Miss, but let's see how we got there today. Ole Miss hosted game day and Katy Perry, but it could not find any offense early. Instead, it was Alabama. Naked bootleg, Blake Sims faked everybody out. One yard touchdown, Bama led seven to three. We're going to halftime, we just saw it. But Ole Miss makes a big mistake. Cyrus Jones, 13-yard fumble return. Bama led 14-3. Ole Miss only managed 105 yards of offense in the first half. But the second half was a different story. Dr. Bo earning his Ph.D. in touchdowns. Wallace to Laquan Treadwell, 14 yards. Five receptions, 14 yards, or 55 yards for Treadwell. 17-10 Bama. Wallace getting surgical again, finding Vince Sanders, 34 yards. Ball game tied. Christian Jones would fumble the kickoff. And Bo Wallace getting down to it. He finds Jalen Walton, 10-yard pass. Ole Miss leads 23-17, 251, three touchdowns for Wallace. One final shot for Alabama. Remember the guy Trent Richardson juked in 2011? Well, hey, it was Sinquez Golson. He gets the last laugh today. He intercepts that pass. Ole Miss wins 23-17. The fans on the field. Here's Nick Saban after the game. We have our goals in front of us, and we play in a very difficult division. And, you know, we've been, tr I, I've been very pleased with the way our team has improved from the first game through the first four games and the way we played against Florida. Uh, during the bye week, our focus was on improvement. This was our first game on the road, and um, it affected us, and we did not play as well uh, as what we have been playing, and we didn't continue to improve. Uh, now, I don't know if it was the atmosphere. I don't know if it was the bye week. I don't know specifically what created it. Probably that they played pretty well. All right? And we needed to play our best football of the year and just really didn't do it. Nick Saban not very happy. Here are the numbers. Blake Sims did not play poorly, but mistakes all over the field today. Amari Cooper's 100-yard receiving streak is over. Only 52 yards after the catch today for Coop. The Tide only 6 of 16 on third down. One of the big stories in this game was injuries. The most notable, a broken leg by Kenyon Drake. Lee Smith has more on how three big losses hurt the Tide today. Another dramatic finish and another Alabama loss. The Rebels take the game tonight 23-17 here in Oxford. And Nick Saban says, adding insult to injury, well, it was literally the injuries. Ryan Kelly, Kenyon Drake, and Denzel Duvall, their statuses are unknown moving forward. You know, Kenyon Drake um, is got a, I think, a broken leg, um, and we took him to Birmingham already. Denzel Duvall has a high ankle sprain. We'll MRI that in the morning. Ryan Kelly's got a sprained knee. Tight end O.J. Howard especially noticed how difficult it was replacing the quarterback of the O-line. It was really tough. You know, Ryan, he's a, a leader on our offensive line. He's a leader on our whole team. So, man, when he went down, it was kind of tough for us. He's kind of the signal caller on our offense. He knows what he's doing. Meanwhile, Blake Sims was actually impressed with how well the replacement stepped in and stepped up. It was better than I thought it was. We had the guys come in that, that was back up, step up, and give us a good opportunity to win the game. And uh, we're very proud. The guy that's an injury, we hope that this week they can get better and come with us next week. 
So the Tide's obviously disappointed about the outcome tonight, and they must put this behind them because next week they have to go to Fayetteville and face a rough running Razorback team. Reporting in Oxford, I'm Lee Smith, WVUA Sports. Thanks very much, Lee. More on the game in just a second on Sports Saturday. We take you around the SEC next and the wild games in the West. Plus, how mistakes piled up for Alabama in an upset loss to Ole Miss. The players tell us what went wrong in Oxford. So stay with us. We're going to get you through this on Sports Saturday right after this. We're back on Sports Saturday with our play of the day. It's from Cardell Jones, Ohio State's backup quarterback. Watch him. He's going to hop. Hurdle to the Maryland defender. Woo! So good we get to see it again. Cardell trying out for the Olympics next year. The man has serious ups. Look at him get up. Ohio State gets a big win in conference, 52 to 24. You know, Nick Saban coach teams aren't used to having to fight themselves as well as the opponent. Saban said after the win over Florida that eventually mistakes would cost the tide, and today that's exactly what they did. Eight penalties and several mental mistakes ended up spelling the end of Alabama's 10-game winning streak over the Rebs. Nick Saban and the players were asked about those critical errors, which were the difference in winning and losing today. We're second and two. I mean, in great shape to score and win the game at the end. Get a holding penalty that puts us in a long yardage situation after we got a first down. So, um, and we throw an interception. So the last two possessions we, we had, we turned the ball over. So um, you got to take advantage of opportunities when you have them. And, you know, it's hard to overcome penalties, turnovers, um, missed executions on defense, and they took advantage of it. You always want to be uh, fundamentally sound and go out there and execute like you've been taught to. So anytime you don't do that, it, all, it always gives the team another advantage. Definitely the time for the leaders to have the rally and step up and be on top of everybody and keep everybody head strong and keep everybody as most, most of the season. If this is one game, don't set us back for nothing. And here's how it looked on paper. In Alabama's five losses since 2011, they're five of 16 on field goals. That included two misses in today's game. A lot more to clean up before next week. Alabama's going to be on the road against Arkansas. Much more on what's next for the Tide throughout the week on WVUA. Now, Oxford wasn't the only place to be in Mississippi today. Starkville hosting a huge one, too. State had the sixth-ranked Aggies to deal with, and deal with them they did. Josh Robinson, two-yard run, Bulldogs up 14-7. That is as close as it would get, folks. Dak Prescott is for real. Nine-yard touchdown pass right here to Birmingham's own Deronia Wilson, Winona High School, everybody. 28-7 is the lead. Later, Prescott is going to go deep, finding Fred Brown up top. Fights for the ball 51 yards later. Five total touchdowns for Dak. Huge win for State, 48-31. to After the game, the Heisman Dark Horse got a little witty with the media. Pretty big statement, uh, Mississippi State meant. <laughs> <laughs> you worked on that a while. No, not actually. Kind of a little witty. We're, we're going to win the SEC West, and that's our goal. And uh, big games like this, knocking off uh, an undefeated team, ranked top ten, I mean, that was big for us. There you go. You know, we make fun of Mississippi a lot, but what a day for the Magnolia State. Ole Miss 5-0 for the first time since 1962. State and Ole Miss beat top 10 teams on the, on the day, same day, for the first time ever. So confusing, I can't even say it. Auburn hosting LSU. Bo Jackson in the house, honored before the game. Bo's going to like this. Check out the cannon on Nick Marshall. Even more impressive, watch Sammy Coates. My ball, 56 yards. 144 yards receiving on the day for Sammy. Auburn up 10-0. Later, it's Nick doing big things with his legs. He's not going to be touched. How do you do that, LSU? Come on. Les does not like it. Bo, however, does. Auburn runs away with it, 41-7. to Easter Bunny likes it, too. The Vols checkered out Neyland for today's game against Florida. Pretty cool. They also decided that field goals were better than touchdowns, which we know isn't true. Up 9-0, Worley loses a fumble, gives the Gators life. Florida replaces Jeff Driscoll with Treon Harris, adds the Gators some life. Matt Jones punches one in. They added a field goal to give them a 10-9 lead. Here's the clincher, though. Keanu Neal. Whoa. Interception. Florida wins it ugly. 10-9, maybe saving Will Muschamp one more week. Mark Richt in Georgia hosting Vanderbilt. And, you know, Todd Gurley, he's good at the football. Newsflash. Here we go, five-yard touchdown run untouched. But to win the Heisman, you have to do other things, too. You know what? He can. Watch him. He's throwing. Oh, my goodness. Wide open, 50 yards. Jeb Blazevich 
He doesn't have blazing speed, but that's okay. 163 yards rushing, two scores for Gurley. Georgia wins big, 44-17. Check out South Carolina. The score, 45-38. to The woes continue for Steve Spurrier's group. Three SEC losses already for them. Big win for Mark Stoops and Kentucky. And all right, coming up next on the show, we take a trip around the country. The Oklahoma Sooners were in a frog fight in Fort Worth. But as we head to break, here's a look at some of the local scores in the act, in college football action. Stay with us. Sports Saturday is going to come right back at you after the break. We're back with a new segment going viral. Today was a good day for that. Check out the Little Caesars mascot trash talking in the end zone in Starkville. Clanga, clanga. Same game. Ken Williamson is a referee having a bad day. Turn around, Ken. We're this way. He does. He gets mad. Finally, that's not good. Finally, Kyle Allen, Texas A&M quarterback, caught on camera doing, running a little game there, doing a little flirting with the video girl on the sideline. Good stuff there. You know, lots of national teams flirting with disaster day in the top 25. Six ranked versus ranked matchups, one of them in Fort Worth. TCU hosting fourth ranked Oklahoma. Tie ball game in the fourth. Trevor Knight is going to come up and be picked off by Paul Dawson. Watch him. Paul Dawson, the big man, is going to rumble 41 yards for the score. And guess what? TCU holds off Oklahoma 37-33. to Notre Dame facing 14th-ranked Stanford. And the Irish also on the ropes. Cargill down three, three minutes to go. Here comes Raymond Wright with all the right moves. But Notre Dame comes right back. Everett Golston, fourth down. He's going to find his friend Ben Koyak. Touchdown, Golden Domers win 5-0 for the third time since 1996. Hey, that's all the time we have. First time since 1990. Four of the top six lost in the same day. Big day. We'll see you next time on Sports Saturday. Good night, everybody.